Good morning. How are you, everyone? Good morning. Welcome back. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is Wednesday, October 12th, 2022. It is 9.02 a.m. Eastern here in the United States. And I pray everyone is doing well. I'm off to a, an early start this morning. I guess I'll say it like that. I woke up at 3 a.m. this morning. And I got up to pray. Good morning. Because I told you I had been waking up. I had for a while. I guess it was last month, right? September. I hadn't been sleeping through the night. I had, been sleep had not been sleeping well for a while. And I kept saying that it was my mistake. It was my miss for not getting up out of the bed and praying when God wakes me up at like 3, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. So this morning I woke up and it was around 3 o'clock. And um, I said, you know what? You need to just get up out of this bed and you need to spend some time with God and you need to pray. So um, that's what I did. I got up out of my bed. I put my praise and worship on. I started praying. I made my bed so that I would not get back in it. Sorry. And your girl actually went to the gym. <laughs> I went to the gym this morning, a little later than I wanted. I wanted to get to the gym in my mind. I really should have been there by like 5.15 so that I could work out until 6.30 and then come home and get myself ready. But um, I got delayed somehow. So I, I went to the gym. I got a good morning on Instagram. Um, so yeah, so I got to the gym later than I wanted. I got to the gym maybe about 5.30 this morning. And I got a good hour in. I got like a half an hour of cardio in, a half an hour of weight training in. And then I came home. So it's an early day for me. I'm thinking about adjusting my schedule and going to bed early and then starting my day much early in the morning because I do prefer it while it's quiet. And good morning on Instagram. I do prefer being up early in the morning like that when nobody's awake. I find that I am um, a, a bit more productive and my prayer time I feel is more um, focused and beneficial like I can really press into prayer better in the middle of the night when the house is quiet and everyone else is asleep so I don't know but anyway it was it was good to be up I can't rem I honestly I can't tell you the last time that I got up at 3 a.m. to pray and definitely when I was in a season when I was doing 3 a.m. prayer I always was back in my bed by 4 30 and I would sleep until six but like I said I made my bed this morning so that I wouldn't get back in it so we'll see how we'll see what time I conk out today it might it might be an early day for me I might be in bed early tonight but um I hope not that's why I pressed my way to the gym I wanted to get a, a burst of energy and um set myself up for a productive day so I'll say that all right so um, what are we reading today? Today we are reading 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I'm just going to go ahead and read it to you out of the Amplified. And I didn't take any notes. Um, as I read it this morning, nothing really hit me where I felt like I wanted to focus on it. So we'll read it and we'll see what happens. You know, sometimes when I read it out loud with you all, something will um, stir in my spirit and then I'll share that with you. But initially, upon reading it, nothing really stood out that I felt like I really wanted to hone in on. So we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll pray. And um, we'll let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit does best. All right, so let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for today, October 12th, 2022. Father, I thank you. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in your day. Father, we thank you for this gift. We thank you that we have eyes to see and ears to hear. Father, we thank you that we have homes, we have food, we have clothes to wear, Lord God. We thank you that you were Jehovah Jireh. You are our good, good provider. 
that you are a good, good father. And we say thank you to you, oh God. We don't take you for granted. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that your goodness, your grace, and your mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. Lord, we lift up our families to you, God. We lift up our children, our grandchildren, our bloodlines, maternal and paternal. And Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you will get a hold of each and every person in our bloodline, Lord God. I pray that you will bless them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Father, I pray that you will get a hold of each and every one of them, anyone who is not serving you, Lord. I ask that they will have divine encounters. I pray that you will reveal yourself to them in this hour like never before. Father, I pray that you give them a heart, a thirst, and a hunger to know to serve you and to love you, O God. Father, in all of our lives, I ask that if there's anything that is out of divine alignment, anything that is not according to your will, anything that is not working for our benefit at this moment, oh God. Father, I pray that you remove all the wrong people, places, and things from our lives. Remove wrong activities, God. Father, I pray that you give us a heart. Teach us how to love what you love and to hate what you hate, oh God. Father, I pray that you order our steps, thoughts, actions, words, and deeds. Father, keep us on the path to our destiny. Father, I lift up our children and our grandchildren as they're in school today. Father, I pray that you keep a hedge of protection around them that cannot be broken, cannot be penetrated, and cannot be compromised. Father, I pray that you dispatch your heavenly angels and send them into the school buildings to set the atmosphere. Let the atmosphere be set. Let there be peace. Let there be calm. Let it be an atmosphere for learning where they can comprehend their subjects and that they can excel. Father, I pray that this will be their best academic school year to date. Father, cause them to excel and exceed expectations. Father, I ask that you bless the works of our hands, everything that we've put forth our hands to do. Father, may it prosper. May it be pleasing to you, but may it prosper. Father, I ask that you bless our finances, cause our bank accounts to be full, Lord God, that we can so into kingdom projects, oh God, that we can help others who are in need. Lord, I ask that you give us wisdom in how to prepare and structure our days, our household, our finances, our eating habits, oh God. Father, teach us to eat better for our body, that our bodies will be healthy, Lord God. I pray that disease and sickness will be far from us, oh Lord. Father, I pray that you rejuvenate us, restore us, oh God. I thank you for restoration. Father, I pray for recompense. Let there be recompense in our lives. Father, everything that has been wrongfully taken from us, everything that has been stolen, delayed, denied. Father, may it be released and returned to us in this season in divine order. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for strategies, oh Lord. I thank you because the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not lack. We shall not want. We shall not be in need. God, I thank you that you supply all of our needs. God, I thank you that everything will work together for our good. Father, we cancel every plan, plot, trick, and trap of the enemy. We cancel them right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, O oh Lord. Now, Father, as I prepare to read your word, I pray that you give us new levels of understanding and wisdom. Cause us to see things in your word that we've never seen before. Holy Spirit, I yield to you this morning and I say, have your way. Use me how you would like to use me. Say what you want to say. Do what you want to do. Move how you want to move, O oh God, that it will be a blessing to your people. So, Father, I yield and I get out of your way, Holy Spirit, and I say, take control. Father, may your um, word be blessed today. And Father, I pray for divine travel and mercy, safe travel and mercies, that everybody that's on the road traveling, keep us all from accidents seen and unseen. Uh, let us return home safely at the appointed hour and let today be effective, efficient, productive, and let it just be excellent and let us conduct ourselves with integrity. Let us operate with the spirit of excellence and may we have joy in our heart and peace of mind. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, so what's the title of um, chapter 15? Like I said, I'm going to start at verse 1 and I'm going to read. This actually is a long chapter. This is the longest we've had in a while. This is 58 verses. So I'm going to stop right around 28 and then we'll pick up tomorrow. Tomorrow's thankful Thursday. Mm, we'll be okay. All right. So maybe what I'll do is 9, 12. 
um, if I pick out any verses here that stand out to me, we'll go over and we'll have a look at them in the message. All right. So this is the fact of Christ's resurrection. That's the title here in the Amplified. And it reads, Now, brothers and sisters, let me remind you once again of the good news of salvation, which I preached to you, which you welcomed and accepted, and on which you stand by faith. By this faith you are saved, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose. If you hold firmly to the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, just superficially, and without complete commitment. For I passed on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to that which the scriptures foretold, and that he was buried and that he was bodily raised on the third day according to that which the scriptures foretold. And that he appeared to Cephas, Peter, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, the majority of whom are still alive, but some have fallen asleep in death. Then he was seen by James, then by all the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely, prematurely, traumatically born, he appeared to me also. For I am the least worthy of the apostles and not fit to be called an apostle because I at one time fiercely oppressed and violently persecuted the church of God. But by the remarkable grace of God, I, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not without effect. In fact, I worked harder than all the apostles, though it was not I, but the grace of God, his unmerited favor and blessings, which was with me. So whether it was I or they, this is what we preach. And this is what you believe and trusted in and relied on with confidence. Now, if Christ is preached is raised from the dead, how is it that some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? question. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain, useless, amounting to nothing. And your faith is also vain, imaginary, unfounded, devoid of value and benefit, not based on truth. We are even discovered to be false witnesses misrepresenting God because we testify concerning him that he raised Christ whom he did not raise if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless, powerless, mere delusion. You are still in your sins. Uh-oh and under control and penalty of sin. Then also, then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If we who are abiding in Christ have hoped only in this life, and this is all there is, that we are all, we are of all people most miserable and to be pitied. The order of resurrection, next section, verse 20 now. But now, as things really are, Christ has in fact been raised from the dead and he became the first fruits, that is, the first to be resurrected with an incorruptible, immortal body foreshadowing the resurrection of those who have fallen asleep in death. For since it was by man that death came into the world, it is also by a man that the resurrection of the dead has come. For just as in Adam all die, so also in Christ, all will be made alive. Verse 23, but each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then those who are Christ's own will be resurrected with incorruptible immortal bodies at his coming. After that comes the end, completion, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father 
after he has made inoperative and abolished every ruler and every authority and power. For Christ must reign as king until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be abolished and put to an end is death. For he the Father has put all things in subjection under his Christ's feet. But when he says all things have been put in subjection under Christ, it is clear that he the Father who put all things in subjection to him, Christ is accepted since the Father is not in subjection to his own Son. However, when all things are subjected to him, Christ, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one, the Father, who put all things under him, so that God may be all in all, manifesting his glory without any opposition, the supreme indwelling and controlling factor in life. Well, that was a nice turnaround, because we sure don't want our, our faith to be in vain, right? Um, I still don't really have too many thoughts of this. I guess my thought would be, you know, putting it in the natural. Is that there were times when people do their faith wavers and they do question um, their faith. They question everything that they know or have known when your faith is tested, right? Sometimes when it could be, it could happen with the loss of a loved one and you're... Um, questioning why God did not save them why did they die you know prematurely untimely why did they die so young right especially when you have young children that pass away it can shake certain you know some people might lose faith lose hope but rest assured um God is who he says he is he is not dead he is yet alive and so we have to keep, you know, we have to keep pressing and keep pushing through those times. And I know it's easier said than done. You know, I lost my father back in 04. He died of cancer. And I remember my pastor came to my house to pray for my father as he was, you know, nearing the end of his life. And there were days that I... I, uh, you know, wondered, I'm not going to say I doubted God because I don't believe God makes mistakes, but I did question like, you know, sometimes people get healed and other times they don't, right? And so there were days, I'm not going to say they weren't, there were days where I, you know, wondered like, how is it or why is it that um, he, he, you know, he left, he had in my mind, right, in my natural mind, he had a lot more life to live. He had a lot more years left on this earth in my mind. That was my heart's desire. But that's not the way it played out. You know, now I could have lost hope and said, you know, because he was not healed, I could have doubted and questioned. But um, God knows, you know, God knows better. My thing was that my, my father gave his heart to the Lord before he transitioned out of here. So that was the best present to me. You know, so I look at it that way. So um, there's really not even anything in here. Let me pop over to the message that I feel like I want to read back to you. Uh, let's just take a look. I went through... What verse did I stop at? I told you guys I stopped at 29. All right. Let's see. Maybe I'll t take a look at here. Verse 21. There is a nice symmetry in this death. In this. I'm sorry. There is nice symmetry in this. Good morning, Sharon. 
Death initially came by a man and resurrection from death came by a man. Everybody dies in Adam. Everybody comes alive in Christ. But we have to wait our turn. Christ is first, then those with him at his coming. The grand consummation when after crushing the opposition, he hands over his kingdom to God the Father. He won't let up until the last enemy is down. The very last enemy is death. As the psalmist said, he laid them low, one and all. He walked all over them. When scripture says that he walked all over them, it's obvious that he couldn't at the same time be walked on. When everything and everyone is finally under God's rule, the son will step down, taking his place with everyone else, showing that God's rule is absolutely comprehensive, a perfect ending. So there you have it. So that concludes um, our scripture for today, our scripture reading. So today, Sharon, we read 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 29. And we'll finish up the other half tomorrow. This is quite long. It goes down to verse 58. Um, and maybe tomorrow. Well, tomorrow's thankful Thursday. But um, maybe I'll have some more to say about it. But this one... You know, other than what I just said, it didn't really, there weren't really like verses I took down and really wanted to elaborate on. So we'll read the rest of the chapter and then maybe I might be full of things to say tomorrow. All right. But everyone have a wonderful day. Be blessed. Safe travel and mercies. Um, may miracle signs and wonders show up in your day to day. All right. So everyone, grace and peace. And I will see you back here tomorrow. Everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining. All right. Bye. Bye, Sharon.